Welcome back to Day to Day Chess. With so many tournaments on the way, including the World Blitz Championship, I've decided to, guess what? Pick up a game or stick to the classics? Well, I don't know if I'm disappointing somebody or not, but I've decided to stick to the classics. I think it's so important to know about our predecessors, what they left behind, what are we using nowadays, to whom should be uh, should we be grateful for um, everything that's been le left behind for chess? Um, so um, here is a game that I chose for today between Frank Marshall and Geza Maruti, two very strong players of the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, Frank Marshall, a top U.S. chess player and a top player in the world as well. He was the U.S. champion from 1909-1936, 27 years right there. Kind of reminds us of somebody else who was 27 years champion, just um, this time a world champion, Emmanuel Lasker, the second world champion. Uh, Frank Marshall is known for his dynamic style and very aggressive, um, very different than Geza Marotti, who was more of a defensive player. Um, he was um, from Hungary, um, one of the best players of Hungary on those of those times. Um, in the same time, he was not only playing chess, but he was also um, an engineer. Like I said, his style was defensive, and he's known for for his mastery in queen end games. And we're going to see one today in this game between the two these two strong chess players. Another thing I want to mention about Maruti is that some people mentioned that um, he was a game end game artist. So definitely worth checking out some of his end games for the moment. Let's just enjoy this game. Marshall went for the queen's gambit, everything natural so far, bishop d3, c takes d5 is another possibility in this position, just um, now the idea is that white stabilizes the center and then can choose whether they're going to play with f3, e4 plan or they're going to do the minority attack. And black in the same time has to kind of decide whether they're going to play c6 or and try to play for the e4 square maybe, or try to play c5 and break through the center kind of fast, and then go, uh, then c4, and then try to go on the queen side. Um, these are some other plans, but bishop d3 has been played in the game. d takes e4, so of course we are utilizing the fact that white moved that bishop, and now a6 with the idea of b5 for tempo. Knight f3 or f a4 are possible here. a4, okay. Um, we would play b6 and bishop b7 stuff, but knight f3 has been played in the game. So far, everything is quite uh, theoretical, has been played before, and is still played nowadays. By the way, guys, so important to remember that um, a lot of the openings we are playing nowadays have been improved a little bit um, by, by the players and kind of adapted to the new style, a little bit more aggressive. But um, at the same time, others have managed to survive all this time, you know, 100 years, over 100 years, and we're still playing them nowadays. Uh, so definitely a great thing for chess. Bishop b3 has been played here. Bishop d3 is another possibility, but it kind of leads to similar positions. Black is just finishing the development, and so is white. Now rook d1 putting the rook on the central file, on the same file as the queen. So black definitely needs to move that queen at some point, otherwise d takes e5. Um, black would not be able to recapture with the knight, which is something he probably would like to do. Now bishop c2, bring the bishop on the, the diagonal. Knight e5 is a possibility, and actually was here instead of bishop c2 as well. Just another possibility, and uh, by the way, it's not possible to win this pawn because now uh, bishop f4 and uh, if you're playing queen h5 to try to trade the queens, these two bishops remain unprotected. And my rook on the d file that I was mentioning to you can actually um, get active on d7 and win some material. So uh, black would not be able after d takes e5 to capture that pawn. And it's definitely annoying to have such a pawn here, f4, 
could follow eventually to protect it. And white is having quite a nice position, but uh, bishop c2 has been played, rook d8. Now bishop f4 trying to chase this queen away, queen b6. Now knight e5, finally, uh, white utilizes this e5 square. And actually, as you notice, these two pawns have not been traded off, basically because white doesn't really want to take to to give black some activity with this knight in d7 and uh, black does not want to take in d4 because um, they want to take there maybe only when they can create an isolated pawn for white and that seems that's not happening for the moment so this tension just remains and whenever it's going to be best for one of the the two players um, that's when the trade is going to happen now rook to c8 a very natural move, finishing up the development and putting the rooks on the quite central square uh, files. Of course, um, not the e file, the e file is closed, so definitely we want to put uh, our rooks on the files that are opened here. Bishop g5, now knight f8. Black is improving the position of this knight, and d7 really doesn't do much, and you don't want to take an e5 to give white that extra space with the pawn here, although the pawns are double, you really have to move the knight and then h7 is going to be a problem. Like this with the knight in f8, we're just bringing a defender here, this knight also comes towards g6 to protect the king and maybe uh, eventually think of trading that knight uh, from g6, but for the moment it's just defensive, uh, we're thinking about with black. Bishop e4, I thought oh, it's a bit maybe strange, but okay, uh, black one, one capture with the knight here, so it definitely um, asks a bishop, bishop trade. I was thinking in this position, uh, maybe knight e4 was a little bit better for white, but um, still after capture uh, in d4, um, if this, uh, this trades happen, knight g4, white seems to be having a slight uh, advantage, but... Um, I'm sure black would hang on to, to this position. However, bishop e4 was played, so now some other trades have happened. Bishop takes, knight takes, um, c takes d4. Now, white did not capture in f6. He captured back in d4, allowing this knight to g6. This knight from here also, by the way, protects the bishop in e7, and now we want to trade in e4. So queen f3, now knight takes e5. Now it is all right for black to capture the knight, and you're going to see in a second why. Pawn takes, of course, natural. Now knight takes e4, trading even more pieces. Like I mentioned to you, Geza Maruti was famous for his queen endgames, and we are trading a lot of pieces. In fact, he has traded a lot of pieces to get towards that endgame. Bishop takes to e7 and now a very beautiful move because we've got two pieces attacked and if you take in, in d1 then what have you done? Rook takes d1 I believe and um, this position your knight is hanging, um, my rook is active, I have a great position if you're not even gonna lose some material here so definitely black does not want to make that trade. He had this beautiful move and only move I guess in this position that uh, really good knight to d2, a very good intermediate move, um, taking the queen and the rook. And uh, here, white has to do something uh, <laughs> about it, needs to move the queen, because of course, bishop takes to d8 would be devastating after knight takes f3. White is just losing the queen, so um, definitely the queen needs to be moved. But uh, Frank Marshall has not chosen the best move in this position. He went for queen e2, and you're going to see in a moment why that move was not that great for white. Instead, he had to play queen f4, making sure that his e5 pawn is defended. Um, now, after these uh, takes, bishop takes d8, rook takes, rook d6, amazing move here in this position. Um, we are leaving basically that knight in f1, we're not capturing our piece down yet, uh, but we have this rook d6 intermediate move attacking the queen, we are going to want to take that knight later, and this trade is definitely in white's favor, you know, you, you don't want to uh, allow white with such a free pawn here that's about to get promoted, uh, you have no way to exit with your knight exactly, so this would have been definitely a great chance for Frank Marshall to um, 
maintain his advantage. Instead, he played queen e2, and now after knight takes f1, of course, you take the rook in d8, rook takes d8, king takes f1, and in this position, believe it or not, black is better. White does not have this entrance with the rook in d6 anymore, and uh, his e5 pawn is going to be... Um, a weakness that black is going to explode and yes i you heard correctly i did say a weakness e5 pawn is going to be a weakness because although it shows that white does have space with this through this pawn in e5 because the pieces got traded off the board that space does not matter anymore in fact that is going to be a weakness because after the trade of the rooks black is going to attack that pawn and eventually is going to force white to start pushing other pawns and by pushing more more pawns uh, other weaknesses will be created and black is going to be able to explode that so exploit i'm sorry <laughs> not explode uh exploit that okay h6 here uh, just a nice move by Mars team uh creating uh some air for his king and getting ready for the end game queen to c2 and now um Maruti traded the rooks, and now that pawn in e5 is going to be attacked. Queen c5, attacking the pawn, and what do you do? I mean, I'm the first one who attacks as black, right? So now queen d8 check, king h7, queen d3 check, trying to create some weaknesses um, white as well, but after g6 there are no more checks, your pawn is still hanging, and you need to do something about it. So Frank Marshall tries to trade the queens, of course, hoping for this position, which would probably be a draw. Um, but instead, of course, Marty does not trade the queens. Like I said, he's really great at this endgames. Queen to d5, going for another weakness, which normally would not be a weakness, but in this type of positions where you don't have light pieces to defend your pawns, Every single one is going to be a threat, and the one who starts attacking first is black, threatening that, threatening some checks in d1. So, of course, after a3, queen d1 check, forcing queen e1. Now, queen d3 check does not allow queen e2 because just check, and queen takes b2 simply wins the pawn. So, instead, why play king g1? And now, we're just attacking the other weakness that was created, technically, b2. Queen c2, and white has no defense for that. I mean, if, for example, he pushes this pawn after queen b2, he won't have a way to defend the a3 pawn. So white has to play this crazy queen a1. Just imagine this queen in the corner of the board. Such a ter such a terrible move, really, uh, forced to, to maintain his, uh, his material. Now, all black does is just push the pawns as much as he can to uh, put white in Tuzvang. As you can see, white cannot move the queen anymore from a1. So he will start pushing the pawns, though, so with that he would be creating weaknesses. And here it comes. a4, what to do? f4, okay, king g8, play some more. h3, h5. I'm waiting. What What do you do? I mean, you have to king, keep your king there because g3 is now weak. And um, if you move it, eventually he did move it, and you're going to see what happened. Now king h1, queen f2. Another weakness has been created. Now you have to give away one of those two pawns. He decided to give that one away and try to activate his queen, which was a good idea. But he failed to do very much in this position. f5 trying some f6 threats. e6, okay, I'm not taking that pawn to uh, fall into some... Perpetuals here, going for the a1 queen, pawn takes here, threatening f8 queen, so definitely we need to take that pawn, and now white is just trying to give a bunch of checks, uh, but black is going to be able to hide away from that. Now queen takes a4, hoping that there will only be one pawn there uh, that's going for the queen. Yes, there will be, but it will be very important, <laughs> a very important pawn. Some more checks. The queen, king just advances until the queen can enter and stop um, the checks. Queen a3 check, queen d3. And now after queen takes a2, um, in fact, here in this position, um, in this position, um, 
white resigned but here if uh, he would have gone for the pawn there's just queen f1 and queen f2 trading the queens and winning the pawn endgame i hope you enjoyed this game stay tuned for more thank you